Hello, everybody, and welcome to coverage of our first semifinals for the Spring Fling Top 8. We have a matchup between Sly, piloted by Will Hurst, against Red Ring Goblins, which will be piloted by Eric Hoffman. I'm Michael Hoype. I'm joined tonight by BK Brian Kowal. How's it going, BK? Great. Can't wait to see uh, the two top red decks in the format go head to head. I'm trying to think if there's like any other red deck that's like close to contesting that spot, and I cannot think of anything. So mm. I'll have to agree with you. Hansa. Uh, it sounds it's like a, our... it's, it's green in this format. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great in all formats. Our, our chat is is ready to go. I know we're we're doing things late late at night on a Friday night. So thanks everyone who's able to join us live. Uh, we are excited for this. Um, I'm ready to jump right into the decks as we can kind of maybe do a little bit of a uh, pregame analysis, but we're doing a best of five. So I think a lot of players are itching to to see some magic and so am I. So I love that Will has the Birds of Paradise play, Matt, because <laughs> his opponent is playing goblins with Birds of Paradise. Yeah, that... What do you think of that? That's crazy, right? Yeah, like, I've, the... I've never seen anybody do that. Yeah, one of the innovations I do. Okay, I guess let's let's talk about the the goblins deck then. I'll bring that one up. Okay, so yes, that that is the highlight of of Eric's deck is he is he's playing three birds of paradise and um, one of the I don't know if it's concessions, but like enable to cast that turn one birds. He's playing more forest, more green sources than the most goblins list, and the kind of the theory behind that is just the more consistent like turn two war chiefs or maybe just curving out to. To play a goblin matron a little bit earlier but just having that extra little boost of mana can can prove to be really good and the times we've seen we saw it at least in one of the games in his quarterfinals match where the the birds really did shine uh, so uh, i think it's a super cool innovation i'm really it's, it's interesting because that's what goblin i mean we've played a lot of goblins as well as as well as me and uh that's that's a that's a thing for goblins is you just always want more mana right Oh, I'm just reading the chat. Uh, someone was saying that there's an echo issue. Is there still audio issues? Um, but uh, I'll, I'll keep going until I get some feedback. But yeah, I was just saying, like, this is probably not the best matchup for, for birds to shine because the likelihood of those birds sticking around, I think, is pretty uh, pretty low, given how much burn the, the slide deck will have. Um, but yeah, other than the, the birds of paradise... I, I mean, is there any like big standouts? I mean, I think it's pretty normal to have naturalize in your your goblin seventy five at this point. Yeah, now it is. Um, yeah. And so that is one of the other cards, the green cards in in Eric's deck. Um, okay, sounds like it might be the audio issue just to that that one viewer. So, oh. all right, um, yeah. let's jump over to Will's deck and. We have a, a classic slide deck, though there are some some tweaks, some innovations that we don't see in a normal slide list. Uh, this is based off of the list that Flint Espel had won the monthly. Uh, there's a little bit of changes. I guess the uh, Goblin Cadets are played instead of Goblin Patrol. But other than that, I think it's just pretty close to what Flint was doing. What do you think uh, this take on Sly? And like, I guess in general, and then specifically this matchup? Um. Good. I, I, um, well, it's it's going to do different things in different matchups, right? And I think uh, Flint's idea was to build a red deck that was good against Parfait, or like to to like maybe maybe not good against it. Um, to have but, a plan uh, against Lantex. Uh, that's how I would say. Yeah. Edge the problems yep. that the red deck has with it. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think that's the innovation is that the ability to stay on one land. Or sometimes zero, thanks to like crash, mm -hmm. um, yeah. is, is something that the slide deck can do that a lot of other slide lists can't. And so, but in this matchup in particular, okay, so we're we're playing against goblins. There, there's no land tax or oath of druids or anything of like that that you're worried about. How does how do the the changes line up in, in this matchup? I think worse. Okay, right. To me, I to me, I think they're worse um, because. You're losing. I I actually kind of always liked um, all lightning against goblins because I think in this kind of matchup, when you're the red deck, um, when you're sly against, yeah, they're both the red deck. When you're sly against goblins, you want to be able to like close that game out faster, and like he's they've specifically reduced 
the ability to do that in in a way. Yeah, I, I will say that maybe the list is like a little bit worse, but I don't think it really changes that much. Like I think Sly is still favored in this matchup. Uh, part of the reason is just yeah. like there are so many cards that you get to have a favorable exchange. Like if you're the goblin stack is spending three mana to cast a goblin war chief, and you're spending one mana for a seal of fire to get rid of it, uh, and it, specifically goblin war chief, like keeping goblin war chief off the board, like it really changes the goblins matchup. Like the the spells are yeah. more expensive, and there aren't haste creatures. Uh, so the red deck does a very good job of of keeping Goblin War Chief off the board. So I I don't think it loses that big of an edge. I I still would pick Sly to to win a best of five against goblins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think it's I think it's a little favored too. Um, I think, um, but like you, you you said that about Goblin War Chief, I agree with you. Goblin War Chief is a really important card. But I think in this matchup, Birds of Paradise is kind of like another Goblin War Chief, right? Yeah, I, so he just it, has it even is, yeah, more. That's true. Um, they, yeah, they just have even more um, cards that they have to remove that Red has to remove. So I think it, it could. Uh, this might be a a very good Goblin deck for this kind of to play against this kind of deck, and it might be a worse Sly deck to play against Goblin decks. So they might. Sure. It, I think it could make this matchup more interesting. But... I can see that. Or more right. a lot or closer than normal. I'm ready to jump down the match. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Sounds if good. you want to let our players know that we can begin. So on the left we have Will Hurst with the Sly deck. He is on the play because he is the higher seed. And then on the right we have uh Eric Hoffman with the Goblins deck. It looks like both players are keeping their seven. So looking to have that stronger start for both players. And um we're gonna kick things off. So I mean I would expect Will to want to open up with a, a one drop. I mean, like, I, you probably don't want Goblin Cadets, though. Actually, I mean, I think, like, you might be able to, you kind of want to burn their creatures anyways. So maybe you're just getting in there. But, like, uh, Jackal Pup or Mog Fanatic, I think, are the ideal turn one plays. They can only block it once, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Seal of Fire is the, the lead off for, for Will. Which is, I mean, like, nice when we talked about just the ability to get rid of. Uh, Goblin War Chief, like he has spent the one mana on his first turn, and now like it is just like in store. He doesn't have to spend that mana later. So yeah, I, he does want to establish the beatdown, though, right? In general, he's, but he's, like he is the beatdown here. Uh, I mean, he he can play a controlling game, but I think his deck is less suited to play. Like, there's not four copies of Curse Scroll, and like, but mm -hmm. but in general, I mean, if the game goes long, like you're. The consistency of your ability to just like draw burn spells is is pretty good with the, the slide deck. So, Eric's open with your favorite goblin. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of Skirk Prospector. It it is a little bit Same. awkward in this matchup because I don't want to sacrifice my Skirk Prospector to turbo out a uh, Goblin War Chief just because it's so easy for the the slide deck to remove. But um, it, there's just so many opportunities I've seen with this card that you can just take advantage of it. So. And we got the first bird of the match. Yeah, also Goblin Lackey. Like, I, I don't know if uh, that was something that was available to Eric on turn one, but yeah. this is a matchup where, like, Goblin Lackey, like, you just don't expect it to connect. So Yeah, I think this is interesting because he had to draw, he had to have two of these cards in his his opening draw, right? Mm -hmm. So he he either just chose not to play a Lackey turn one, which is reasonable against the Seal of Fire. It, or he chose to not play the birds turn one. I think he was trying to like bait out a removal spell, hopefully, with the prospector, which you kind of like. And now he's gonna end a turn shock. So get rid of that lackey. Doesn't want that one connecting. Do you think he kills this bird? Uh, good. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting because like you have the seal of fires that like can take out cards like goblin war chief and whatnot. Like, I guess cards that you don't want to see is, like, Ringleader and Sea Chain Commander. But if you're using burn spells to get rid of a birds, like, you're you're kind of, like, using a resource that the, the game is going to go longer because you're not pointing that at the face. So, yeah. I mean, I can see it either way. But, like, um, my gut is I would not do it in this situation. But Yeah. There's a lot of who's to control who's beat down going on here. I think that's like the really interesting thing about this matchup. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of the times it's hard for the goblins deck to have a board presence just because there is so much removal from the slide deck. But like anytime that the goblins deck does, then you're able to like, oh, I'm able to exchange my 
matrons and my ringleaders into like more pressure and card advantage, which the red deck doesn't have a lot of, and then kind of like convert that into to pressure and damage. Here's a ball lightning for Will. We take a chunk out of of Eric's life, so it's it's good to get that one like down for Will because there are cards like Mog Fanatic and Gem Palm Incinerator that uh, you don't know if that damage is going to get through in the later points of the game. So yeah, I love I love being I love being goblins and having that Mog Fanatic in play. It's like a bunch of, a lot of security there. All right, he's got a fourth land. He, he could cast Siege King Commander here. Yeah. I, I mean, that's one of the things we saw with, with Ancient Tomb and Birds of Paradise is he really turboed out his Siege King Commander in previous games. We just have the 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 War Chief coming on turn three. And, I mean, well, I, I don't think it's likely to stick around because I think this is the prime Seal of Fire target for for Will. So. Nope. No follow-up. For the war chief, I was expecting maybe a pile driver or something to come down to take advantage of the cost reduction. Mm -hmm. But uh, Skirk Prospector is still here, so doing some damage. And we do Crosby, have a, all right, a backup. Still around. A second bird. I mean, this is kind of a situation. I How many cards are in Will's hand? Like, it feels like this could be a game that really could swing into Eric's favor. Like, I guess he probably would have played Goblin Ringleader in that spot if he had it. But, like, CG just... Commander would probably just be the, the best thing I think he could do right here. It's his turn four, so he's on ten cards. He's got three in his yard, or five in his yard, but two of them are for fetch lands. So he's got three. Okay. There is a CG. And so, like, I... I... This does seem like the best thing that like Eric could do in the spot. He's able to yeah. like have a threat that like produces multiple bodies. Will has not pressured Eric's life total very much. So it was just the ball lightning that that's damaged him. And um, this is definitely a position I think that Eric could, could convert into a win. Yeah, Eric has ten mana in play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all his like all his cards just like make mana. <laughs> So we have a shocks that are going to the face. So I don't know if this is an indication of the strength of Will's hand, or maybe if he's just thinking, if I'm using my spells to get rid of creatures, then I'm not going to win. And he's just hoping yeah. that the, his deck is kind to him, the top of his deck. I, I would guess Will knows that this is too much board for him to, to deal with. I mean, I would think, and like, I think you want to think of the CG commander, because, like, untapping, like, with, with that, like, converts to a lot of damage, but... Beyond that, like I, I completely agree. It's fine to use those burn spells to go face. Um. Yeah, I mean, but he kills that sieging commander. I don't know if he's gonna. Like, would you sacrifice yeah. two goblins to deal two damage? They're gonna deal two damage if they're attacking, right, on this next turn. But Will just has to kill his opponent. Like he, he's only. This is how does Will win this game if he kills the sieging commander? So you're saying like the, that the two points, like, yeah. would would be a whole turn. Like, assume he has a, a lightning bolt in his hand, you know? Yeah. Um, he well, has lightning, to... Ball lightning is, would be really interesting, because, like, the Siege Gang with the Skirk Prospector, even though Eric's tapped out, like, that's one that's kind of tricky. Like, you kind of have to get rid of the Siege yeah. Commander or the Skirk Prospector uh, if, if if Eric was yeah. tapped out, so... If he has ball lightning in hand, he I think he definitely would have sealed the Siege Gang. But the, but he, might, the... he, might wait. he might wait, too. He might wait till I mean, the end How of... much damage can Eric deal here? Like, it, like... If if Will doesn't use any of his burn spells, it's three, six, six, eight. He can do ten, 10 easy 12. here. I think he can 12. do twelve. Yeah. Um, well, he might with the birds. He might be able to do fourteen. I don't know. I think he would. I think he would. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think he, he would. Do, he can. I think he can do twelve. I don't think, I don't think he can do fourteen. So the the attack would be six. From his mana, yep. he could deal just his normal mana, so the birds and the lands, he could deal four. Yeah. Uh, he... And then he only has three goblins left. So he can throw one more at him, right? But he has one available mana, and then one goblin, and then another one that attacked. But two goblins are gone, because one got sacked for mana, one got sacked. 
And then he has three remaining goblins. I think he can do 14. Um, agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> There's a war chief. That's not what Will wants to see. I mean, it might. It doesn't really change the math. I don't think. Like I, like I, without a. I mean, that card. Yeah, it's like, two turns. Yeah, anyway, it, right. So. Um, but this three mana is it would be two damage anyway, right? Like, so you might as well add it to the board. Um. Well, it, two mana would be two damage because of sea change. So I think it's actually less efficient. If I mean, like. You, you yeah. don't have to sacrifice a goblin, so like, and but like, so over two turns, but like, I think in general, in this yeah. immediate short term, it doesn't change anything. It's always that change. you think you could do fourteen or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I did. I what did the chat say? No, I don't chat, think anyone said anything. Chat say fourteen or twelve. Chat, let's vote twelve or fourteen. How much <laughs> do you think you can do before this, War Chief? Got any math people out there? Get all the math for it. Okay. He attacks for six. Yep. He has five mana in play, so okay. he can. So four of it gets used to shoot to fling two goblins, right? He did he just sack sieging for a red mana, or did he get? Oh, I um, sealed. I think Will sealed the seal, siege. I gang. think the seal is being used right now. Oh, he's getting a matron. You know what that means. You you might be right. I think I I might have miscounted. That, that's why I'm over that count. But... Michael Hoyt, not too big to event when he's <laughs> could be wrong. What are we getting with Goblin Matron here? I think uh, Fire Master, right? Well, I don't think that's. I don't, I don't think... think he has it. Yeah, but he should. <laughs> <laughs> So assume that the war chief is dying this turn. He's attacking for four. Will would go to eleven. I think I'd be getting ringleader. Okay, I this you get to play this one, and it's like good against ball lightning. It like it's like a I kind of like the fanatic here. Yep. Yeah, because he knows Will's on two cards, right? Or one card and a seal of fire. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he knows that the only card that could get Will back in this game is probably Ball Lightning. So he can force he can force that shock to be used on the Fnatic. But then he probably wins the race, right? Yeah, I, I do like the... like. I think it's either Ringleader if you don't want to play around Ball Lightning and like Mog Fnatic if you do want to consider it. The, the yeah. one thing is, is like the lists are open and I think there's only one other Ball Lightning. Yeah, there's only two yeah. total. But... But you gotta... It's... If you're in a commanding position, you uh, you start playing for all the routes, right? Interesting that the seal of fire is not used pre-combat. Yeah, it's gonna that, cause cause that... him to take three more damage than he would. Yeah. Was it seven? Probably needs a big one here. Wait, I think Will's at nine, and did why is Eric at? No, Eric's at nine. Will is at seven. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Will was at fifteen. He got attacked for eight. Okay. It's math. <laughs> <laughs> Chad has asked, "What about getting Goblin King?" I don't know if there was a king in mm -hmm. in the main, and plus, like the Seal of Fire probably changes that. Eric does well, have a sharpshooter in the main. I think he has an additional one in the sideboard as well. King would have probably forced me to use the seal. Um, yeah, King might have been right. I'm the second seal. I guess it makes sense that it, if you're not dying that turn, that the seal of fire is not being used on the war chief. That does make sense. But you're you basically need all hits in your hand. Well, I mean, killing the war chief probably would have bought him two turns to draw spells. So if Will has to think. Does that give us like any indication of his hand? Because it's certainly not burn spells that add up to seven or to that add up to nine, right? Yeah, there's um Yeah, that's what 
What things would make you think? Um. All right, he's going to seal Eric. The fanatic? So, sealing the fanatic. Oh. Okay. All right. He's going to play ball, his second ball lightning. Oh, okay. Let's get Tarot's ball lightning. Is there a fire blast here? Why didn't he get sharpshooter? Um, sharpshooter been like... There's a fire blast! And there's a fire blast! Oh my god. <laughs> so, the, I, I mean, like, Eric, like, tried to get the mock fanatic to play around that... Yeah. That, that ball lightning. And yeah, uh, Will had the seal of fire that he didn't use on the war chief, which we kind of like were a little bit surprised, but it made sense because it didn't change the clock. And he was able to use that preemptively on the mod fanatic, and that cleared the way for a ball lightning, and then got through. So he had to have either peeled a ball lightning or fire blast there. Yeah. <laughs> we got the duelist out. The technology oh from Eric is it's is amazing. Out. Last time we were talking about oh, we were talking about Gaia's Cradle and in, in Durain Tournament last time, and we were talking about the art of beatdown with Incinerate. So that's amazing. All your classic duelist strategies, I love it. Uh, they all apply. That that theory just comes back and uh, applies to all our pre-modern. In pre-modern, you cannot use outside notes, but you can unless it's specifically in the duelist magazine. It's in the bylaws. If you check it, the website. So is. The art of beatdown is that a Mike Flores article? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think that predates who's the beatdown. Maybe that article. Ooh, maybe it is. Predates it. Okay. Well, I I do know the the last one that that Mike was commentating with me. He was mentioning he's like I do remember writing for for the duelist. So duelist, the art of beatdown. I'm gonna check. <laughs> do you have any copies of those old magazines? I do have a. You. Is that something like a personal collection, or do like people come into the store and like sell stuff like that? It was somebody brought some in, and okay. we I bought them. I used to have like almost all, like a lot of them, but they died in a flood, a flooded oh. basement. I'm trying to collect all the sideboard magazines. So I had like all of them too. That was it was a bummer when I lost it. Um. Man, they don't have any writing credits on this page. All right, I'm giving up. So what if? Oh, I was to say if if Eric would have gotten Gem Palm Incinerator, then I guess the the Seal of Fire just would have been used on the Skirk Prospector. Was there anything different that Eric could have done in that spot? I think if he, well, if he gets Sharpshooter. Then you just get rid of the war chief, and it doesn't have haste. You get rid of the war chief, yeah. He could have. Well, he could have got gem palm. But then, if you get rid of the prospector, because you could, he could yeah, kill the prospector. You and... would have to do it in the right phase. Like you couldn't do it in main phase one. Yeah, so, so he would have had to do it before he drew. So in like. Yeah. Unless he just like jump checks him and be like, I mean, if if he like or just like if he just like seal fires and like, hey, are you gonna sack two goblins? You know, he might not even have it. Mm -hmm. Would you do that? What if you like if your opponent like pretend you're tapped out there in that situation? They seal fire your um your skirt prospector. prospector. What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> life totals are. What, what was Will at? Was he, he was at, at six? seven. Okay. Seven. I don't know. I think. Yeah, I don't know either. I feel like you kind of have to. I don't know. The way Will played that, I think he must have peeled the ball lightning, right? What was that? The way he played it, it feels like he, he must have drawn the ball lightning. Yeah, because if you had the ball lightning in hand, I think... You would do it during combat, right? You would... Yeah. Well, not necessarily because then, like, Eric could play a post-combat 
creature because of the, the Skirk Prospector. Mm. That's true. But if he's he has to remove the if he has to remove the Mog Fanatic anyway, might as well take one less point of damage, right? So like based on that, well, like but but I if think... he like I think Eric is less likely to make like sacrifice goblins to put another goblin into play if his Mog Fanatic is still on the board. But... Yeah, that's true. Eric's gonna start off with a goblin lackey though. Will has the Seal of Fire that's there ready to likely will be used to get rid of this lackey, I think. Something I'd be willing to trade two damage in for. He chooses to kill the lackey. Alright. That's a, that's a play. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, chat talking about food chain goblins and then the dirty kit, dirty kitty goblins. Do you remember that yeah, one? Yeah, I was, do. It was a bunch of rituals. I never played that deck and I never wanted and to. and Empty the Warrens. I remember yeah. that one like Osip did like a, a deck tech on that one. Yeah, that deck was, that, that Billy, was sweet. Billy Moreno made that deck, right? Okay. I, I just okay. remember Osip I think had like a some deck tech that was like at one... I think it was Pro Tour Valencia. I'm trying to think what it would have been. Yeah, but... That thing was crazy. The Kennedy Goblins would be really cool. Oh, is, I the, is Will at 18 or is Eric? I think Will's life total is on the right. Okay. But it seems like... No, because there's a second seal of fire, right? Yeah. Will's at 19, okay. Well, that's weird, because that, that Will's life total was on the right last game. <laughs> was it? Yeah. That's why I'm always confused. I'm just always confused about life totals. That's. Wait, how can Will be at 18? He's no, at 19. He, he fetched once. He's at 19. Well, how... One seal of fire got okay. used for a goblin lackey. I don't. Why would a seal of fire be used right away though? Will is that? Yeah. All right, okay. Whenever I put two dice out, the close I, one is me, and the far away one is my opponent. I'm confused, but okay. Oh, fanatic! He let the lackey hit him and then killed it. I I got too caught up on a dirty kitty and. Uh... Uh -huh. All right. It's choosing not Third to trade point. the jack up for the. Do you like that? Um, I think I would have taken. I think I would have traded. I, I would say like that is like I the think, one card that I yeah. would be maybe inclined to to do. I mean, like obviously the slide deck wants to do damage. Yeah, to me that's how they how they beat you. How the goblin deck beats you if you're sly. Grim lava mancer and a mock fanatic. He is. He is being the beatdown. I mean, He's... Grim Lava Mancer is a nice one where you kind of can like switch roles in a in a, a pinch. Like if things get out of hand, you can start playing the control. But in general, yeah, like Will's being aggressive. We can see a gem palm. I'm guessing this is going for Grim Lava Mancer. Yeah. Gem Palm and Sinner is kind of a tricky card in this matchup because the Sly deck does have a good amount of agency in like keeping your board clean, but mm -hmm. there's going to be one Goblin in play unless the the War Chief leaves and the Mog Fanatic from Will leaves. So, ooh, this this War Chief stayed on defense, so Eric's looking to play a little bit more defensive. Doesn't want to take more damage if he doesn't have to. Okay, so Jackal Pup gets in, and now we have a trade, so... Um, yeah, I like the trade from Eric. He has all the mana he needs at this point. Might as well just gain two life. <laughs> or prevent it. Prevent it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, Warchief is not the creature you necessarily want to die, because haste is really big. But uh, obviously having a second one in hand. Will oh. only has two cards. Will taking this here. Okay. 
I'm just so shocked that we won that last game. <laughs> I guess he had a um he had a decent well, no he didn't. No, he had a decent number of outs. Any three damage spell would have won the game. Yeah. If he had the fire boss in his hand. Which I suspect he did. Okay. More attacks. Uh and the war chief's chipping in, but nothing else has come out of Eric, so he might be out of gaslight, because, I mean, like, what card would you hold in your hand for Eric? Yeah, Goblins doesn't usually pass doing yeah. nothing. Naturalize, I think, is the only thing. How do you board this matchup when you're Goblins, Mike? Uh, I guess it depends on what you have, but I don't know. I don't feel like there's that much you can do to change things. Like, Goblin King's nice, because, like, that can change math. And, like, blocking actually might be relevant. But there's so few times that, like, the red deck is completely tapped out uh, that, that you're guaranteed to get through. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what even, like, cards... If if I could pick out of all pre-modern, like, what sideboard cards I would want for Sly for, for a Goblin deck. Can you think of things? Um, like, I actually kind of like... Hierokinesis? I kind of like... Yeah, I kind of like Gem Palm against... Okay. And I tend to like board extra jump homes when I play goblins. There's just def been definitely spots where jump home incinerator has been clunky because the red deck, had, like the slide deck, has kept your board clear. And the, yeah, the points true. where you want to deploy it on two, because like your turns three, four, and five, you want to be casting like war chief, ringleader, and sieging, and it's harder to fit like a jump home incinerator in those. Uh, but but yeah. Chris Girl really big for Will here, I think. Um, kind of, he can play the control deck now, which might be the right call if Eric's actually say, like, cards. Uh, Will's down to seven, and if if he's not able to finish off Eric, then like obviously the chip and damage will get him down lower and lower. It's reckless abandon. That was that not the card that was named? Um, it must not have been. I guess there also is a barbarian ring in play, and we are very close to threshold. We are at threshold at this point since the shock has been deployed. Shock Salaki gets in with the fanatic. I bet he has fire blast, right? Or no, he would. I think he would abandon here if he had fire blast, so his scroll would work. Or He's gonna using... ring the war chief. I think. Yes. Confirming threshold. Yes. All right. War chief down. An ancient tomb. That's not the card that Eric wants to see. Is Eric? I don't even know. If, is is Eric winning at this point? I don't even know if he is. I don't think he is. The curse scroll does like so much work. Like, CJ and Commander seems like the best card. Goblin Matron, Goblin Ringleader is fine. Oh, I thought that Birds was attacking. <laughs> Another Birds. More mana. <laughs> Alright, we got a Curse Scroll activation. Two cards in hand. CJ can turn this one around, though, right? He, he can be the hero. A Ringleader. A lot of, like... We've all been here against goblins where yeah. they, they still get back in the game. It just it feels so bad and against against a slide deck, like every turn you give them, it just feels like you're so much closer to dying. Bad, I just wish I knew what Will was naming. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's bluffing the fire blast, he has two reckless advantages. Or something weird like that. I don't know. <laughs> Be kinda of funny. I would assume it's fire blast. Or whatever you name the first time. All right, abandoning, abandoning fanatic. Okay. Then your your reckless abandon really only deals three damage. Yeah, that's only okay. a profit of three. There's a fire, fire blast, blast. That's down to four, and there's a seal of fire in play. You can curse scroll for two. Oh, okay. 
There's just one card in hand, so Suffer Vortex. Suffer so Vortex. He'll go to two, and then the Seal Fire will finish him off, right? Yes, he will. And that's going to be game two. All right. Well, I mean, it looked like a spot like Eric was like in a comfortable life total, had somewhat of a, a board presence, but mm -hmm. kind of just wasn't able to continue the pressure. And Will's like, well, if you're not attacking me, I'm just going to be able to get to a point where I'm putting all my burn spells at you. So, Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, That's... now that we're done with game two, that means we get to go to sideboards. Oh. So I have the Sly sideboard up. We're looking at two Flaring Pain, two Red Elemental Blast, two Pyroblast, four Pyrokinesis, three Crash, and two Meltdown. So I think the only card I'm interested in is Pyrokinesis. And are you interested in it? Well, I will say the times that oh, I've Will, this played, is Will. I'm sorry. Yeah, Will, Will is interested in it. He does not like it as much as maybe I would have thought. Like, a four does seem like a lot, but still, like, the ability to interact when you're tapped out is nice. But, like, the times I talk to him, he does not like... He feels like pitching that extra card really does hurt. Yeah, why are they playing four? Uh, it, I don't know. Is this a Flint thing? I think that is something that he changed. I think Flint was playing three, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Pyrokinesis and Sly Sidewards. Um, I think you could just play Fire Ice <laughs> or Arc Lightning and probably be as happy. And those cards at least go to the dome, you know? Yeah, Go um, Goblin Cadets probably is one of your worst cards in this matchup. Yeah. Probably don't want to get that. Although, let's kill all the creatures. Do you do you take out self work vortex or no? Um, the damage is nice, but like it, it's it's kind of slow. Like or just like the ability to like that you have to tap out like three mana main phase like sometimes can be awkward. I don't know. But if you have four Pyrokinesis, like, and you're not bringing them all in, in this matchup, like, I guess, are they just there for elves? Like, what else? Why do you have the four Pyrokinesis? I don't know. I, I mean, I've been looking at it and asking myself why right. why Pyrokinesis. I think you do take the Vortex out just for, like, a solid interactive card like Pyrokinesis. All right. Um, I don't know if anything else, if I take anything else out. I mean, I'm not even sure I take Cadets out. Okay. Uh, I have the Goblins list, so we have a Compost, two Tranquil Domain, two Hull Breach, two Pyrokinesis, three Tormod's Crypt, two Red Elemental Blast, one Goblin Tinker, one Goblin Sharpshooter, and one Goblin King. Uh, I'm not excited about... I mean, I guess I can get behind Goblin King, but beyond that, I don't think I want any... Or maybe... Tinker is probably reasonable just to kill a Curse Girl, right? Or is that... I mean, you have naturalizes. I think I think they're in his main. I'm trying to see it. Like, oh, he has hull breach. I think in the main. So maybe that's worse than. Maybe I would bring in pyrokinesis. I I think I would take py pyrokinesis over a tinker, but I don't know. Do you think like killing curse scroll is going to come up more often? Slash is more important. Oh, we're already playing. Um, oh. Jump down to the match. <laughs> We it's have Turn Lackey. Yes. I would say, like, it's... Pyrokinesis is, is okay just because the ability to, like, tap out and be able to kill Grim Lava Mancer or Ball Lightning. But it's hard to get, like, two cards like, almost against the Sly Duck. Yeah. All right. Well, Seal Fire takes out Goblin Lackey, so no connection there. Does Eric have a powerful follow up? Pyrokinesis might be decent if you get a cards with ringleader or something it lets you i mean one thing that's nice trade. Like, you certainly don't want like the recurring sources of damage dealing damage to you if you're the goblin deck so like pyrokinesis yeah. definitely can help with that there's a backup lackey two lackeys a third lackey do we have a third lackey <laughs> <laughs> How many lackeys does it take to connect against Sly? Is it two or three? I think it's the answer would be three. I think you need three, yeah. Uh, oh. So just... Patch the just mountain and go. Nudging. Does that indicate anything? Or is that just a time saver thing? 
I don't know. What could it be? He missed. He went to get a forest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Incinerate going to take care of the lackey, so... I guess that's a small tip of Will's hand. It could be a mana thing. I, there might be some spots where you use incinerate over shock in that spot, but I think most likely that's not the case. There's a matron. What are you getting here? Ringleader. Goblin ringleader. First appearance for him. I was going to ask you what you get. <laughs> <laughs> A You're the goblin times, expert. You should be answering the goblin question. A lot of times it is ringleader, so... Um, I, it might depend. Like, if you don't have a fourth land, then it might be a little bit different, but if... I mean, in this spot, I'm happy to get ringleader. You haven't taken damage from Will, and um, so you're expecting to, to the game to go a little bit longer. Man, I'm starting to think Vortex might be wrong to take out, too. I don't know if he bring any cards in. Just Maybe you take out, like... No, that doesn't seem right either, does it? Maybe you take out Cadets and bring in a, a couple Pyrokinesis. Yeah, I can see that. All right, we got Ball Inning. Is there Pyrokinesis? That's what Eric would need in this spot, because if he's tapped out, no, it's going to connect. Yeah. He'll go down to 12. Because I don't think a Goblin deck wants a Sulfuric Vortex in play. No, in most spots, no. They, they need a little more time. So it's going to be better for you than them. All right, ringleader comes down. Here's that ringleader. This hit. A pile hit. driver, a fanatic. There's still That's... a hull breach in there. Okay. Okay. That well, the, I guess the targets are sulfur cortex and crystal, which are pretty big players if they come down. So pile driver and mog fanatic go to hand, and then we get to attack for three. How many cards does Will have in the hand? He hasn't used many resources, so. Man, just 12 just seems like that. That ball I need connecting is so much. Mog Fanatic, okay. That's not great here. Because there's Pile Driver, a Mog Fanatic. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you just. Yeah, the Mog Fanatic's not great here. He's a. Uh... I don't like three cards. He probably has three or four cards. Looks like two the way it's stacked, but I could be wrong. It, it should feels like it should be more. Feels like it should be like four. Yeah. Because it's it's turn four, so that he was on the draw, so that's eleven, and I see uh, seven cards. Do you do that? Do you do that when you play Magic against people? Like count cards that way, rather instead than of, instead of asking how many. Instead cards of you have? sometimes I do that. No, I don't. Um, if I would only do that to instead of counting cards in library, just count cards in play usually. Yeah, I do that all the time rather than count through library. Um. Oh, I, I got my light trolls mixed up. Who's on the? Who's 12? Who's 13? <laughs> I think Will's always been the right. And okay, okay. Right. I think Will's 13 and at least the last two games, the red, the red, <laughs> the red die was Will. Uh, that, that's probably a better one to look at, yeah. Much more intuitive, yes, the, the vertical structure. So a second matrix yeah. has come down. Is this this might be like a siege gang commander point? Um, you just get a ringleader too. You can just keep going. A mog fanatic. All right. I mean, like, not quite as exciting as ringleader or siege gang, but I actually do think I do like this like thought process that. The ability to like play it on this turn interacts well with with the damage cards from Will, like your Mava Mancer or that that one left of the Ball Lightning. Um, mm -hmm. I like it. Some might say I'm a fan. 
Why do you like a second Mog Fanatic? Just to protect against Volley Volley and, and using your mana, like... Um, yeah. Like, these turns are, like... Like, every turn you give to Will is... Like, your life total is is being reduced, so... We have a Goblin Matron blocking a Mog Fanatic. I don't really like that. Yeah. Attack. Did he shoot him with the Fanatic? Yeah. Interesting. Well, so there's four, five cards in hand for Will. Okay. It's a little scary. I, was, I mean, like, if Will's making that attack, that, that attack doesn't make sense to me. I feel like you, you might as well yeah. just block because you're not winning that turn and you're still dealing that damage. Yeah, and we know he doesn't have a lot of cheap burn spells in his hand because he incinerated a lackey. We got the Goblin King. There's a king. Maybe he doesn't Let have any burn spells. These goblins no blocks are, now. They're walking on all the mountain. Well, that that guy's got the biggest target on his head. Uh, if if this guy makes it through this combat phase, I would be very very surprised. <laughs> nice beta goblin good looking, king. Good looking goblin king. Good looking king. All right, we have a pyrokinesis pitching a jackal pup. All right, so you deal two to the king. You just take out the mog fanatics. Yeah, I think so. Seems like the best course, nope, but he's going to get the ringleader. Ringleader. Does that indicate anything? And a pile driver. Okay, so. If you know your opponent has pile driver in your hand, you probably take out as many creatures as possible. Yeah. I just think I mean like even like the Mogfinex like interact with like cards like from Lava Mancer mm -hmm. or whatever. What did he exile with the A Jackal Bear Kinesis? A Jackal Pub. Yeah. That, that one's a good one to exile in this spot. Yeah. Dog seen better days. <laughs> All right, pass the turn. Piles will be driven. All right, this pile driver is large. Eight, nine power? Nine, nine deuce. <laughs> large, large. With This will kill Will if he does nothing. I think it's a bolt. Wait. Oh, another is that another pyrokinesis? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's discarding pyrokinesis or exiling pyrokinesis. Okay, so these ones are the fanatics are gonna be they'll deal two damage on the way out and the other ones deal two. I mean this act well. Do you like that better than just killing four one ones before he can attack? Ooh. Cause then he would only take well, one damage from the attack. It depends on like this way you only took two. It depends on like what the turn like the follow ups. Like you if you're afraid of like ringleader or war chief, then like it might be more problematic. I guess it depends on what else yeah. is in Will's hand. It's, now there's a much faster clock going twice as fast. <laughs> How do you like a bird's a paradise here? Bird on the board. They're gonna catch a lot of shade because he keeps drawing the birds when he runs out of gas. <laughs> but I guess that is what happens. Will has three cards in hand. I mean, if, if any of these spells get pointed at, okay, like, then this is really bad for Will. Yes. Yeah. Um, that definitely indicates that he, because I, I think you'd be better off, like, saying, like, I'm going to draw a two or three damage spell and and try and get you from 11 than here. Like, well, mm. are you just, you're just dead it's here. It's a classic paying seven for two damage here. Yes. Yeah, it's going to kill, remove Will. Yeah. Commander. Was the, was the, the Birds of Paradise was needed there, so... Did its job. Right. The, the yep. turn, turn seven, Birds of Paradise. Yeah, the Sayers. It's roll. The seventh battle was very critical. Yes. All right. Well, Goblins is on the birds, board. Birds I mean, for the win. I feel like Goblins was like in all those games, and it just like things just kind of slipped out. So they all look really close. Yeah. Will was telling me he thought this match was pretty close. I think it is a little more in the Sly's favor than Will gives it credit, but. Yep. He likes to downplay his chances, I feel like. 
<laughs> Whatever I talk to him about match up. <laughs> All right, well, the one thing Game that's kind of tricky is beating Sly two games in a row on the draw is a, a task. So I think Eric has an uphill battle, but uh, one thing he's done, he's done a good job of not taking damage from Ancient Tomb. That's that's one of, like, this is probably the only matchup yeah. where you don't really want to see Ancient Tomb because... The... Would you board them out? Like, I would consider boarding them out, maybe. Because you really don't want to tap them ever. My gut says no, but like I, I why would they, you? I just feel like there might be some spots where, like, you playing a CJ commander on turn four just like might be worth the two damage. Yeah, but, you might be. But like, and also like, I know I, looking at Eric's sideboard, like, I wasn't very impressed with the cards on the sideboard. But uh -huh. I certainly don't like the idea of taking two damage as an agent too. So. <laughs> I mean, if you just had three mountain in your sideboard, then like I probably get like on board. And be like, yeah, let's just swap those out for that consistency. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, he was probably bringing in Parkinesis anyway, so that's more free spells. I don't know. Do you want to land in your deck that you can't tap for mana? <laughs> well, I don't think it's that black and white. I, I, it's it's just a card you don't want to tap most of the time. I think we're uh, getting a refresh here. All right. All right. Will's screen is, has been freezing. Yeah, quick, my, my APM of switching all the screens back is. <laughs> Sure, I'm so on camera. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Getting comfortable late into the night. Yeah, it's a late night. Might fall asleep in this, in this game. <laughs> Love the. There's kind of an irony to like the new border birds in Eric's deck, but like the old border birds play mat for Will, but also Will known for not playing <laughs> new old... artworks. Yeah, yeah. Just all stacks on top of each other in a fascinating way. So, Eric does mulligan, so he's down to six cards. And leads off with a Mog Fanatic. So this is the first time Will has not had a turn one seal of fire. Will got a Mog, but he kind of does. Yeah. So if Will, I mean, if Will attacks with the Mog Fanatic, you block with the Lackey, right? Yeah. But if you have a removal spell. Doesn't have the option. Thinks this Mog Fanatic will deal. More damage than the seal fire. Well, and there's a backup one, so. Seals are very, very critical over this match, I think. Yeah, I mean, it makes Eric's like, one of his turn, best cards. It makes, like, the, the Goblin War Chief turns a lot more awkward. Because Will can still tap out and then and get rid of a War Chief, so. Yeah, definitely. All right, we got Jacklepup here. Jacklepup's ready to attack. Like this, these are the situations where I think it's like tough for the Goblin deck because I guess Gem Palm and Sinner might might not be the best case because like there's still a, a Goblin in play because right? Goblin Gem Palm and Sinner sees both sides. But speaking of blockers, here we go, Goblin Matron. You throw your this mom card does a lot of work in this matchup. You throw your mom in the way of a Jacklepup. Are you? I'm 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 saying you're a Goblin. I guess that's what I'm telling you. If you were a goblin, would you throw your mother in front of a, a, a jackal club? <laughs> More of a troll, really, but... <laughs> Ooh, Seal of Fire taking out the matron. I, that I makes that sense, sense to me. Yeah, he's got a good beatdown going. He thinks he's going to attack twice with a uh, monk fanatic. It might get more than two. 
What was the card that Eric got with the Matron? Did you see? It was a Ringleader. Ringleader, okay. Four Another pups. pup. So Will needing to lean pretty hard on the, the aggro creature side of his deck. I mean, if you're getting rid of a Goblin Matron, does that mean you're going to just like burn every creature? Yeah, I mean, I think when he has a draw with a whole bunch of pups, you know, that's that's the way you have to go, right? You I have mean, to you know this Ringleader is coming down, like, the next turn. So, like, he, I mean, just saying, like, because you can't mob Fnatic a Ringleader, and you know he's going to draw cards with, with a Ringleader. Oh, Eric is yeah. attacking. That surprises that's, me. This is... Wow. My gut tells me that's a mistake. Yeah, I, I don't think I would do that either. Especially with double War Chief. Goblin King in his hand now. Is, there a, is there a Pyrokinesis in his hand? Yes. Well, he would have cast it. Oh, he could have drawn it this turn. I mean, yeah, that's, I think he to definitely me, that's the only way there. that you make that attack, right? Yeah. All right, we've lost Will again. Sorry, guys, my internet connection. Alright. So, yep, all these it's working fine for us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that that is my guess, is is that's the situation. Because otherwise I think alright. <laughs> I think we got a little preview, so we're gonna do this again. Okay. All right, let's try this again. We'll get a little frustrated with the cameras. Yeah. I mean, I don't right. notice anything on my end, but... Yeah, he looks fine to me. Yeah. We do see a Pyrokinesis exiling a Goblin War Chief. So all four creatures, or all three creatures, will be targeted. Which one are you dealing two to? Uh, I guess a Jackal Pup. That makes sense. <laughs> I guess you use... Do you use a Mog Fanatic to... No, I I think one point of damage to Eric is better than saving you one point of life, right? You understand yes. what I'm saying? Oh, not hitting them. Yeah, because like one one pup is getting hit for for two damage, so you could yeah. use your mog fanatic to shoot it for one. But yeah, or you could do three to one pup and one to the other. See if they really want to do it. <laughs> Right. War Chief. I won't do it for run two, but maybe and, for three. You and know? King. So, I mean, like, this is a spot where, like, Will has to use his removal spells, I think, on, on Eric's creatures. Yeah. Like, this is, I think, too much damage. This would be nine damage. And, and one removal spell would save you... Wow. Is Will just, like, trying to win in this next turn? Um... 14's a lot. It's really impressive. It's, it's gotta well, be. Like, that has to be his, going for it. That has to be his line, right? One, two, three, a be shock, bold. a bolt. He goes down to nine. Right? Or do I have the light totals? It's going okay. to six. Wow, he was holding a hand of fire. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're not using a Rubusol there, like, that would have saved you one, two, three... Four, five, six, six points of life. He's just going for the win right here. Nope, doesn't have it. We are going to game number five. Oh, man, like I don't know. Yeah. Like, I was like, my heart was like, <laughs> get the like. I was ready for him to just. It did seem a little weird. Stuff. Like, why not just shock the? I mean, shocking the king. No, you shock the war chief. Well, maybe not. Is shocking the war chief saves you the most life that turn? Right. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, but um, over well, if you shock the war chief, you're taking three. Shock the king, you're taking four. But then he only has five damage. You know, I don't know. I think if you just stall, well, if you're just stalling for time, um. I guess if like if Will has one 80, other, you're gonna take eight either way in two turns. Right? If Will had one other burn spell in his hand that he didn't play, he'd be able to kill 
Well, I guess he'd be able to kill a king and still live another turn. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Think, do you think just killing all three of his creatures was... All three? Or, no. Or not all three. Well, he could have killed two of them. He had a shotgun of old. I... Yeah. Um... Seems a little weird to go for it. I don't think it's weird. I, I guess it depends if there was a card in his hand that he didn't play, but it if he didn't play it in that spot... Because like, I think almost any other burn spell could have had him live another He's... turn... Do you think he had two fire blasts? Oh, did he have three mountains in play? Four? Did he? I kind of think he had four. I don't know. I don't know either, now. All right, well, Eric's won the two sideboarded games, and one of them was on the draw, so... He just needs to do it one more time. I mean, like, I was just saying, like, it just feels like you just can't beat Sly, like, in this matchup two times in a row in the draw, but uh, I don't know. It feels way closer when it just needs to be won, so. Yeah. He, uh... Yeah, well, here we are to game five, though, and that's, that's pretty cool. Always love seeing the... Always love seeing a game five. Yeah, I mean, like, and... I was on the edge of my seat there, though, like, it felt like, uh -huh. just, I, I don't know, <laughs> Will's demeanor just makes me nervous, that, like, I feel like when he points the burn spells at the end of the turn, it's like, oh, yeah, you got it, kind of thing. He de definitely had a confident fashion with it, you know, like, yeah, I, I thought, I thought, I would just, like, assume his opponent was dead when, when the shock flies. <laughs> He had to fire blast, so he wouldn't have had to worry about spending that mana at the end of his turn. Yeah, I I don't remember the exact board state, but I don't think it was two fire blasts. But... We'll find out after this game. <laughs> Maybe he had a no. I would say if he had a pyrokinesis, he would have used that. For sure. Bit of a shock. Yeah. The All game right. he had two pyrokinesis. He, the game he played two pyrokinesis. He lost. Who, who's gonna win? Will Will or? Who do I think's gonna win? Or yes in the chat? You. Um, I kind of feel the gobble deck. Yeah, I, I don't I hate know. to count Will out, but like I was like I don't like on paper I don't think that makes sense, but like something in my gut is just telling me the goblin deck. I don't know. Yeah. The goblin deck is well getting, so that's that's worse. He did that last game though too, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He... Alright, one card goes to the bottom. And we're gonna go. Game number five. To determine who is gonna be one of our finalists mm -hmm. for our spring play. Has the other finalist been determined? No, we have not played that match yet. Still looking to schedule that, so I'll keep you updated when we have that plan. But Will's going to kick things off with a Grim Lava Mancer, so... It's always good. No I mean, it, it's not... I think it's probably his worst turn one play, right? Um, I don't know. After board, I think I like it better. Okay. Um, no fetch land for Will. Yeah, that, that, that could change my opinion of it. Oh, seal of fire's here. Okay. That that makes the lava answer a lot better. That you're just able to naturally deal with the, the lackey, so double seal. Your lava answer missed... getting in there. Two mismatching seal of fires and in with the <laughs> I answer. will say Eric starting with a Carplusion Forest is not ideal for him. Yeah. That does not make things, that does not make things easier for him. Okay, here comes the Lava Mancer. Another Lava Mancer. Okay. And... So will that really have a huge beatdown draw here? Yeah, the, the second Lava Mancer is, is not as scary. Okay. But Take, taking one to play a Goblin Matron, we have a second forest and still no pain-free source of red. This is always kind of the killer for... Uh... 
goblins, I feel, is drawing enough red sources. It's another reason I think birds is kind of cool, because it's like... Well, I mean... Accelerating and becoming a red source. Well, the know? problem is, I think Eric is playing, like, five forests. But I don't think you're... Oh. Like, overall, I don't think you play more red sources. Yeah. There's a lot of argument about mana bases in pre-modern. I don't know if you're aware. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I, I've seen some. I, I try to stay yeah. out yeah, so... I always think, like... Goblins is an area where you kind of want to the, the hedge a little with, worse, actually. The Goblins for... deck is different because I don't feel like it's as traditional in terms of just curving out. Because there's definitely yeah. terms where you overload on mana. Like you play like right. War Chief and Pile Driver, or like War Chief, Matron, Pile Driver, and you needing four red mana in that one turn is different than just like curving out kind of thing. Yeah. And you, you can make it super consistent, you know? Um, it's very easy to make your mana super consistent for Goblins. But your goblins, ah. um, your goblins are so um, so potent, or red mana is so potent in the deck that it uh, you're not always rewarded for like your mana base can give you so much power that it's right. not always worth it. We got a again. There's mana. another forest. <laughs> From Eric, this one's gonna show another ringleader and a jump home incinerator, but yeah, just that Carplusion Forest just feels awful in this this game, or the lack of mountain, I guess is is doing his work for him. Yeah, this is not a matchup where you want to deal be, deal damage to yourself. <laughs> Here's Bolt. Take him down to. 10, 10 or yeah, 11? Will, I think Will has missed a point from the, the Carpusion Forest. Uh, I will adjust Will's life total, though. He's All right. Got a lava man him. Yep. He's keeping his board clear. No Barbarian Ring in sight, but Which yeah. kind of implies um, a lack of, of burn spells to me. Yeah, especially like a card like Ringleader where like its board presence doesn't really mean anything. Like <laughs> CJ and Commander or War Chief like do. But... Yeah, this feels tough for Eric. Like, I mean, just the way that the, yeah, the really mana's true. drawn out that you're... I mean, he can't even cast a War Chief in this spot. Uh, not that it would be particularly great because the Grim Lava Mancers are online, at least for one shot. Actually, two, because of the Mog Fanatic and the Bloodstained Mire. But... We'll, we'll probably see an Ancient Tomb right here. Oh, no. Another Ringleader. Okay, take a damage. Yeah, expecting the Ancient Tomb. He's going to show his hand. <laughs> there, there's yeah, an Ancient be... Tomb, right? A yep. Mog Fanatic and a War Chief. That War Chief, looking awkward. Mog Fanatic's a pretty big gain, though. Yeah, I mean, but there's still two Grim Lava Mancers is kind of the awkward thing. Um, and I mean, like, if this oh, there's another, another forest, forest. There's, there's and there's a bird, a birds, a, a needed birds. I don't think it's gonna stay around. I think I would, I would probably kill that birds after attacking with a mock fanatic, but yes, or lava mancer it, or yeah, yeah. Will's gonna fetch and. Shoot something for two. I'm going to kill whereby I. <laughs> well, a little frustrated. With Will, did, did, did they hear that in the? <laughs> I think yeah, yeah. Like when he refreshes and I haven't muted quick enough. Yeah, then yeah. Um, uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like from from my end, everything has seemed normal. So yeah. Four forests in your red deck. Yeah, this is one time where your mana base has definitely betrayed you from the, the goblin deck. Yeah. Alright, he's gonna shoot Eric for two. Alright, well, that's gotta be a, a confident will play, right? If you're... Yeah, I would think so. I guess you could attack with both Lava Mancers, deal one, or attack for two, like, get through for two, and then kill the birds. At worst. Because, like, two Grim Lava Mancers doesn't really mean anything. Right, nope. This this mod fanatics go in face. There's a fire blast. Yeah, that's this, a fire this blast. Game, that will turn you into a four and a grim blob mancer. 
will take you down. So, mm -hmm. goblins put up a good fight, but uh, yeah, the the painful mana base him off. was just a little bit too much. So, we have Will Hurst and his Sly deck taking down Eric Hoffman and the Red Green Goblins. Will will be advancing to our finals. We have yet to determine who his opponent will be, but uh, let's jump down and see if we can get some insight from the players. Hello. Hey. Hello, hello. Oh, that uh, was a tough last game for Eric. That's what I can say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very mm. rough. The other ones were good, though. Yeah. I, um, I, I was going to say, like, just momentum. I don't know. The feeling, like, going to that fifth game, I, my heart just told me that the Goblins deck was going to win, and I, maybe I cursed you, Eric. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we were all counting on you. That, I didn't even realize it in turn two, turn two that you just had a Carplusion for us. I'm like, that could not be a good sign. And when the forest no. came down with it, that was, that was not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. They they all came, yeah. It was like a they yeah. all just kind of came out the wrong way. But I would say even yeah, in game four, we we tried to make fun of the birds of paradise that came down like on turn seven, but it helped you play the siege gang that to kill them immediately. So it wasn't even that bad. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Very yeah. true. Four well, super yeah, close I mean, games. The first four, there was yeah. like those were nail biters. Nail biters. Yeah, okay. well, oh, BK is still. Like, you, you can't still need it like, for me. Oh, maybe I should have bolted the bird <laughs> in, this, in the first game because it was like very close to uh, to being able to close it out there, but just short. Yeah. The fire blast is always there. Yeah. In the first game, was your top deck the fire blast or the ball ball lightning? Well, it was the fire blast. Um, and I was hesitating because at first when I drew, I was like, "Oh, I just win," and then. I realized he had a prospector on the board and enough goblins to like incinerator my ball lightning. So I was hesitating and wondering okay. if I just go for it. And then I'm like, oh, well, I guess the red deck just goes for it. Much like game four, it's just like, well, if he draws his one of his two pyrokinesis, I guess I'm kind of screwed. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> yeah. So. What did you guys think of the matchup? Was this something that you think someone had a big edge, or do you think it was pretty close? What has been your experience in the past? Um, it's really close. This version, um, the Flint version, is much less suited to this matchup than other versions. Uh, I mean, I have the pyrokinesis, and that's it, but I'm not as many um, uh, curse scrolls. Uh, if I can land one of those, I, I feel good. Uh, but definitely not great because it's still overwhelm it. Um, as much as I don't like the card in general, I think this matchup really comes down to Ball Lightning. And if you see it, yeah. mm -hmm. um, it's the card that lets Sly shoot the goblins and then still get ahead in the damage race. Um, and if that doesn't happen, then they just have too much time to recover in almost any game where they resolve a ringleader and are not caught up on mana, unfortunately, like, I think you lose most of those games. Um, I don't know if you have a different opinion, Eric, but that's kind of how, how I feel about it. Yeah, no, the ball line seemed important. I, I, like, the, sure. that first game, you got them both, and that was, that was pretty good for you. Um, the, it seems very context dependent, like very, very much colored by what your draw sort of looks like. I mean, if you have the, you, if you're able to play the curse scroll game or the, or the ball lightning game kind of spit on your end. And then, um, if I'm, um, and putting out enough threats that demand answers, and then we can play like a, a grinder one or like, when are you choosing to shoot my creatures versus like, you know, play that, you know, just trying to kind of knock that top of your deck and need like one or two burn spells uh, within the next couple of cards or whatever to burn me out. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, post board, I was mostly just trying to insulate myself as much as I possibly can, which is not too much, but I just took out the, the, uh, the one power guys that wouldn't have necessarily an immediate impact. And then I took out an ancient tomb. Mm -hmm. um, Makes sense. Um, 
and uh, yeah, put in a couple of Pyronic Kinesis, the Goblin King, and then I even put in the, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of options, but I put in a Tinkerer, actually, just as, like, slightly uh, lesser. It's, it's going to trade uh, with right. those creatures. Um, it'll absorb two instead of one damage off that bolt lightning or whatever, and once in a blue moon, maybe I can War Chief and uh, hastily kill a Curse Scroll once in a great while, but... Um, right, you know, trying to get a little creative there. Uh, didn't really that didn't really come up, but yeah, not yeah. very, not really a, sh a sharpshooter kind of matchup. And the, the yeah. prospect, I mean, yeah. and I imagine he's boarding out his uh, his cadets <laughs> with yeah. all my, my one drops and such. Yeah, so. I uh, I dropped the uh, cadets and the two vortexes. Um, you know, Flores had a good point about cadets and even patrol as they do turn on your incinerators on my end. So if I'm clearing board and then I play it, it's bad news bears for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not convinced about pyrokinesis in the goblin sideboard. I'm not convinced it's right in Sly. It just every time you have it, you have to play a defensive game and you have to hold cards. And I don't think that's the game you want to play. You could just have two burn spells, right? Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes, like, when you pyrokinesis, it's like, all right, well, I just need six life or whatever, and that's pretty nice. Um, yeah. Um, it's great against me. Um, game four was just so... I, my, my heart fell out in my chest, I ain't going to lie. It was it was bad. <laughs> it's bad news bears in my, in my heart. Um, yeah. Yeah, but that's kind of how I felt in game one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't really ahead, uh, <laughs> yeah. Point. Um, I, the Goblins matchup is so close. I think you want something for it, and Lava Dart isn't the best, so it may be you know more fireballs. I've thought about as dumb as this sounds, Pyroclasm instead of Pyrokinesis, Arc Lightning. Arc Lightning. I don't want to play three. I don't want to pay three mana to kill maybe two, maybe three creatures. I'd rather just pay two mana to kill their whole board. I have played Pyroclasm in my sideboard. Yeah, so. yeah, as as yeah. so that that's what I was really hoping because there were a couple games there. It's like, oh, it's this Pyroclasm or Pyrokinesis Pyroclasm, I feel much better. I just do that and then I play out my guy and then we go. Um, but I think this matchup is always close. Um, and I think it also comes down to how many times you've played the matchup. Like, I could definitely tell, like, Eric knew what was important. Like, he kept getting – like, he got the ringleaders off Matrons when it was important. But then he – I think it was game two or three, you set up, like, double Fanatic to protect yourself from uh, Ball Lightning, which was beautiful. Did so you have I, one? I did not. Okay. I did not. I don't, I don't think I did. No. Can't imagine. I because that was the game. Of, yeah, I think I pyrokinesis very badly in that game. Or it's like, no, no pyrokinesis was optimal when I played it in any of those games, and it just felt really bad. So that's that's my opinion on that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a really yeah, close matchup. Yeah, no, there's definitely some good, uh, interesting decision points, and yeah, like when I'm going for the fanatics, uh, just the texture of the board there was like, well. Uh, cards aren't going to matter so much right in this spot. I, I have the board. Uh, I, I've got I've got the, the clock there. Uh, there was no no card that was going to change the clock on you. So just kind of demanding an answer or for you just to be able to ignore it completely and get me before I can get you. So I might as well insulate myself from as many outs as I can. So Yeah, I mean, and, and Fnatic on both ends is a really good card in this match because it's Kills all my important stuff. It kills your lackey. Um, I don't know. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm supposed to fry the bird just like every other matchup you see a bird. I was really torn on that game one because it's like, I suppose if the siege gang happens, it's really bad for me, but every other thing else I can control. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I don't. What do you guys think? Do we, do we bolt the bird in these matchups? Do we hold? I, I was really not sure. I think in general, yes, but like there are certain spots. Like if it comes down on turn three or four, I don't think you do. And I yeah. think that's that was the situation you faced. I think it, it didn't come was down it? immediately. And the spot that came down, I I think I said, maybe I'm wrong, that I said I would not, not kill it, but I don't know. 
Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, um, the, yeah, the game, the game one had a bird, I believe, uh, or one or two birds. You played it turn yeah, two. I probably would have killed the first one in your spot. That was That's an interesting the, sequence. The first game, I thought, where you you went start prospector, then birds and lackey. I think. Yep. Yeah. 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 Like, I mean, I'm good. Or choke his mana a little bit there um, at that at that spot. Uh, get the prospector out there. He has more creatures in the pre-board games, so just wanted. To, I mean, the this prospector is, is going to show you something, anyways. Um, and there's no way I'm ever getting through with that first creature. So yeah, um, yeah. And then, also, yeah, if he, I guess, if he bolts the bird, then you can't play prospector and lackey. But you can, if you play one of the red creatures, you can play two things. Turn two, right? Yeah, makes sense. And I was edging in that game, like. I think once I saw a Siege Gang come down, I really just committed myself to, I'm not going to kill the Siege Gang. I need to direct points at face, and that's the only way I'm winning this game. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah, you kind of look at like look at your hand, what what to add up to, what's the mana look like, and yeah, yeah playing to win and not well. playing just to not lose. Kind of thing. Yeah, and I there think I may, I may have done that game. Game three or four, I felt like I was just, I don't know, maybe killing unimportant creatures. I'm still not the best at this matchup uh, in evaluating. Um, game, lackey, game, lack, what was that? Sorry. Game four, you like shock bolted and then tapped and, and scooped, I think. What was in your hand at that point? Eric had um, attack with a war chief, a ringleader, and a goblin king. Yeah. I think it was at a life total where if I go shock bolt, Draw ball lightning, lightning you. I think I had a fire blast in my hand. Same situation, I think, as game one. Similar. Was yeah. I think I had just enough if that happened, and that was my only way to win after. Because I think that was the game, like, his pyrokinesis blew me out, right? Yeah, he was at 14, and you, like, shot him for five, I think. And yeah, I years. was. But you I was real. Killed- I could have, but I don't think I win that game. At least in my mind, I didn't think I win the game if I spent the burn on there. I'm just hoping I draw into something good. Mm-hmm. Um, I would that that game. I was really, really banking on. Please don't have the pyrokinesis, sure. and it made it even worse because in that same sequence, like my sorry to everybody viewing my whereby was sucking, but like that sequence when he had it was like it froze three times. So I kept refreshing. It's like, does he have it? Well, nope. Funny, like, see- uh, from from my end, I think everything was normal. So like, I don't know, man. It's fine. I, yeah, it looked just fine. I just tried but, to refresh you and, and rearrange everything as quick as I can, and then mute you. So yeah, no, I'm I'm sorry about that. I don't know. Oh, good boy. You guys dying. <laughs> but um, no, I think I think it's an even matchup. Um, I caught a lucky break game one, obviously, and then game. Game five, I benefit of lands, you know, on the other side. But I, I definitely could have seen losing this match easily. I, I think it's that close. So yeah, it, that's it, all it, I got. Felt very winnable, very context dependent. Um, just, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, uh, good games and uh, absolutely and good luck in the finals. Well uh, done, Aaron. Aaron. Uh, good job. Always, always enjoy seeing the goblins in action. So, even if there are some birds of paradise along with them, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I my pick is goblins is the best deck in the format, hands down. So, I kind of, I kind of want to try out these birds now. To be honest, I'm they, sure, I'm I'm sure really a lot of people will be trying them out. So, and given the just, even if in the long run we decide that they're not correct, I think goblins is a power enough, powerful enough deck that people will do well with them. So, I'm, I'm excited to see if. Other people are going to be casting Birds of Paradise in their Goblins deck, so yeah, yeah absolutely. I'd love to see it. See what people think. Uh, Turns your War Chief is hot. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Out there. Is this the first time you played Birds in your Goblin deck, or has this been a thing you've been doing for a while? I've not been doing this. So this is relatively new. Um, I started with four, um, and uh, decided that it was like just a little bit too much uh, mana wise. Um, mana source wise to have 
28, and I didn't see. I don't see how you can really cut a red source or a green source. Um, and they all have to be able to tap for um, the green sources. All have to be able to tap for turn one. So um, that looks feels like the right number to me at this point. Um, but uh, interested in here it's looking at other people's takes. Uh, I've just been very happy with the number of. I mean, if if you look at like the elf matchup, um, I would definitely like anyone who's like considering whether or not to play the birds like like that's a pretty good example of like imagine if i just didn't have the bird in some of those games what happens there uh, the difference there it's the difference between him being able to like play mass core and be able to untap and at which point my you know it's very small chance for me to come back if he has gets to untap with a mass core and play um yeah. so um yeah try it out see what you like <laughs> All right. I mean, it certainly made it difficult on my end trying to evaluate the situation. I can't lie about that. Are you going to Lobster Con, Eric? No, no, I'm not. But um, I may be, may, I'm, I'm considering making the trek over to uh, to Wisconsin for, right. uh, for your term. Yes. Well, Consider no longer. Do. You're totally going. Yeah. Where are you, where are you located? I'm in Galesburg, Illinois. All right. Oh, that's easy. So it's like three hours. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. So I got to definitely hope to see you. <laughs> yeah, right, July first. Well, let's see. Let's see you there. With that, I think players. I think we'll we'll let you go, and BK and I will wrap things up real quick. But uh, want to congratulate you, Will, and job well done, Eric. Thank thank you guys both. So, all right. Thank yeah, you so much. Hosting, and uh, yeah, appreciate it. All right. We'll catch you later, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, BK. So we have finished one of our semifinals matches. We have Will in the finals. He is going to be facing either David Daniel, who is playing a blue-white Lancel deck, or McLean Denny, who is playing a Hermit Feb deck. So we are still looking to schedule that last match. And uh, I will... What do you like there? Um, I don't know. I haven't considered that on paper. Like, I mean, I don't know if the... If the combo deck is too fast and like and the the amount of discard spells just make it problematic, or if if there are enough interaction spells from the blue white deck, I feel like a, nobody, a, I feel like nobody except Feb players know whether Feb wins. I would say like that is definitely one deck that I'd be like, um, if I'm playing it, I don't think I'm as like the, the what is equal to like the people who play that deck. That deck I feel like has a very high ceiling, and the people who have practiced it. Definitely get a good advantage from from being comfortable with it and knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. And also, you do get a lot of edges just like playing against people that don't make the right decisions because it is difficult to play against as well. Mike, thanks for watching us up right now on the Twitch. So we might not be actually broadcasting this. Or... What did you say? Is this? Uh, it's, yeah. It says thanks for watching. On yeah, the... yeah, that's my ending screen. We're still live. Yeah. So. Oh, so people can still hear us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, glad you stuck around. <laughs> yeah, thanks glad for watching look, live. Glad you, don't have like... look, glad you don't have to look at us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the late night magic. So I'm guessing a lot of yeah. a lot of people will be watching this on a, a VOD or yeah. once it gets to YouTube. So and no matter no matter what happened, we knew mountains were going to win. Yeah, mountains won. That's a good place to be. Um, I'm a little sad that goblins didn't win. I always like the goblins deck. So yeah, but I'm happy Will won. Yeah, so. we like Will. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, PK, for jumping in the booth with me. I had a good time. Uh, is there yeah. anything else you want to say? We have. Um, I I don't know if we'll get our semifinals and finals in before LobsterCon because I am going to be leaving midweek and I will be busy. But uh, I'm really looking forward to traveling to Boston and for the North American Pre Modern Championship. Um, yes, certainly where I, a lot of us are going. So. Cool. Who will be North American champion? I'm we may have <laughs> we may have just done a uh, a little draft yeah. of players, so that's coming soon from Will. We should give him a little plug there. Um, we uh, we 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 drafted our top eights yeah. with uh, Ryan Gardzinski and Will Hurst, and so that's gonna add some excitement because now I got some horses in the race, you know, nice. including <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that'll be fun. Great time. I can't wait to play. And uh, it's nice that we get to play finally. You know, we get to yeah. play a, a tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we usually don't get to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if uh, if anyone is at LobsterCon, and uh, feel free to stop by and say hi. Yeah, uh, please say hi. I want to meet 
everybody. It's great. So, but uh, until next time, take care. Yeah, thanks for listening.